All right, guys, welcome to the uh, third workshop here in the series of workshops. Um, today we're going to actually go through and try and apply some of these concepts that we've been learning, um, working within the modifier uh, panel and working with uh, our different stacks and our edit polys um, and some of the graphite modeling tools. <clears throat> and we're actually going to try and uh, build something that um, resembles a building for once rather than these just kind of arbitrary um, exercises. And uh, the files for today are are kind of all here and uh, they're saved out at different points um, so you can go in at any point uh, and, and pick up from there if, if you're you know doing this and then come back later and, and finish it up there's also um, some CAD files that are here and these CAD files um, are basically going to serve as a, a base and we'll kind of look at those and go over those and there's also a uh, word document here that um, just kind of outlines um, roughly what I'm going to be going over and what we're going to be doing um, doing today and, and how we're going to be doing it. So um, that's something you know I, I kind of created for, for my reference but um, it's also something that you can kind of see what I'm doing um, you know also in the text version kind of step by step from from top to bottom here. Um, <clears throat> so you see the first thing is actually uh, import roads and bef right before I do that I do want to show you uh, if I go to my desktop here, uh, actually it's under my documents, workshops. So if I come into here, um, back one images. Uh, the, the images that we're gonna um, be focusing on today are actually some projects that we've worked on in the past. Um, and what we're gonna be focusing on is the uh, roof structure of this building and the trusses. Um, and it's a more organic form that we're going to be focusing on. So this is what we're going to be kind of uh, striving for or, or trying to accomplish. Um, and this is kind of the overall aerial shot. So you can see it's it's a kind of somewhat distorted, um, distorted you know organic kind of elliptical shape uh, with some slots cut into cut into the roof. Um, so we're going to show you kind of a quick easy way to to produce this, um, you know, without without too much effort on your part. Um, the other thing is a very you know straightforward um, you know reality of kind of architecture um, building that we're going to build and it just kind of shows you um, you know the other side of it where if you don't have something organic but you have something um, far more regular um, you know where you have a lot more repetition in it um, and you know that's that's kind of what you're dealing with or, or what you're working with then again, you can kind of use Max to, to quickly model something, um, you know, to get something like this um, <clears throat> produced if, if that's what, you know, you're kind of designing or working with. Uh, so those are like the two kind of things that we're gonna go over, something a little more regular and, and kind of, like I said, more rooted in reality, um, and then something a little more organic and free uh, freeform kind of flowing surfaces. So with that said, uh, the first thing I want to do is just I want to open this roads file for you guys. Continue. And if I do my uh, viewport command and I set it to plan view, you can see basically all this is is a closed polyline. So if I come here and I click on this, it's a, a closed polyline that's watertight. Um, so there's no gaps, there's no seams in it. And you know you could bring your line work from CAD. You could bring your your line work from Rhino. It doesn't really matter. As long as these points are all connected and joined, um, join is the command in Rhino. And you know in AutoCAD, what I what I typically do is say I have um, you know some line that's kind of like this, and they're all they're all separate lines. What you can do is you can hit BO for border, enter. You select the points within. So you select within that area hit enter and then what that does is that creates a basically copy of that but it's a closed polyline and the border command does not work unless it is completely closed and sealed so it's kind of a, w a way of telling yourself oh, okay you know um, I I'm good to go I can take this geometry into max and, and actually you know take this line work into max and actually make geometry out of it because if there's a gap there and again I try that border command and I try and pick this you know it's telling me oh we can't we can't figure out what's going on with that border um, so you know it's a good way of checking your line work to see uh, if there is some error that's popping up so you know I've kind of done through this and done the border command and everything worked out just fine um, so I'm gonna close out of this 
And step one on that um, Word document was actually to import that file. So we're going to come over here and go to import. And I want to go to that file, which is under, for me, under my documents and my workshop. Um, file for students, roads, open. It might take a second here to pop up. Of course, I'm kind of recording this, so it might be just kind of eating away at my, and I don't know why this is, uh, let me uh, try and do this and pull this back up. There we go. All right, so if you guys can uh, now see this here, <clears throat> basically the most important thing of this, you, I mean, you can control whether it comes in uh, by the color of your lines or if you want everything to be one object. Um, you can, you know, you can control certain things within here, how it comes in, um, your units. Um, you can tell it specific layers to include or not include if I, you know, if I want to select it from the list. Um, you know, you can even control certain things with your spline, but really for us the most important thing is to make sure that our vertices are welded. Um, so, so when I bring this in and import this, I can then grab this shape here. And if I maximize my viewport, zoom into the shape. So basically if I'm, I'm looking at this shape here, and you know I hit F3 on the keyboard it's not doing anything because it's just line work right now so <clears throat> what I need to do is just put an edit poly on top of that and because it's a closed you know this is where the closed watertight boundary comes in because it's that closed watertight boundary what it's doing is it's then um, basically creating a surface that is tying itself to where that line work is now the other thing I've done is I've also um, created this with some steps here. Now, I've done that intentionally just to show you that you know even once I bring this in um, you know you can do some modifications to the, to the geometry. Uh, if you're gonna do that I usually I usually can either convert it to an editable poly would, and essentially what that does over here in your stack you see it's an editable spline and, and there's an edit poly on top of that essentially it's just collapsing it to an edit poly so you can do it like this here right click and select collapse to and you know just click yes so it you know it collapses that down and uh, you know creates your editable poly, and then what I can do is I can go into my polygon layers, which is a four on the keyboard, and uh, I'll zoom over to this guy. And what I'll do is uh, I'll turn on my move tool, and I'll hit S for snaps. And and again, if you've been following along in the videos, um, you know the the first couple of videos I, I kind of told you some key steps of turning off your keyboard shortcuts. Um, setting up your units under unit setup, um, setting up under preferences your your window crossing um, here, and also in your viewports the zooming about um, the orthographic and perspective. So you know just kind of keep that in mind as I'm running through and doing this and, and talking through this because a lot of the things I'm using like S on the keyboard, you know, is turning my snaps on and off. But if I have this keyboard toggle on and I have this shape selected and I hit S, I believe it applies a, a subdivide to the object. It doesn't turn on your snaps. So, you know, you need to be wary of that, these buttons in here, because if, if they're enabled, it's going to mess you up trying to follow along in these videos. So with that said, I, I turn on my snaps and um, I want to make sure I'm, I'm locked in my Z axis. And once I'm locked in the Z axis, then I can um, hit the space bar, grab this point and snap it to that point. Then I'll unhit the space bar to unlock it, select my next shape, hit the space bar to lock it again. I'm still in my Z. I'll drop that down to that point. To come over here, select this shape. Again, hit my space bar, and then grab that point. To, you know, at really any point along here, as long as it kind of snaps into place. You know, I could even go from here to here. It doesn't really matter. I just want to bring that geometry down um, to the surface. I'll hit S to get out of snap, four to get out of my polygon layer. So, you know, and space bar to get out of my uh, lockout. <clears throat> so now I am, you know have my shape and you know it's kind of there and if, if I go into my front view my line work in CAD you can even see I hit G to turn off my grid actually had some elevation to it um, so it's not perfectly flat line work these roads actually kind of come up um, you know at these these uh, some spots here it's a ramp coming up to an upper level so you can even have line work that's in um, a three-dimensional view or you know has some some change and elevation to it um, conversely, what you could do is <clears throat> you could have this in CAD um, as perfectly a flat thing, and then in Max, you could come in then later and um, 
you know, what you would actually do is you could do like a FFD selector, for example, and if you needed to raise up, you know, this, this side of it to a certain elevation, you know, you could then raise that geometry up to an elevation. If you wanted to be a little bit more precise about it, close that out, you could actually come in here, cut it at a certain point, um, you know, make sure all your vertices are welded, and then, uh, you know, raise it up with like a soft selection, um, you know, based on your, your, your vertex points. See if I turn on my vertices here, um, all the vertex points. So I could actually, you know, raise up just this, this chunk of it, for example, if that's what I was, if that's what I needed to do. Um, and then turning on the soft selection would give me that ramping up, um, you know, that we kind of showed where it gives you uh, some curvature to your geometry. It's not just a, a you know, a straight pull up like, like you see here. So now that my roads are in place, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to hit T for top, Z for zoom. I want to get my um, reference geometry in place that I'm going to use for my structure. Uh, but first I need to import my next file, which is roof plan detailed. And before I import that, I'm going to go um, back to my folder and I'm just going to open this up again to kind of show you guys in CAD um, what I've done and what I've drawn. So you can see basically it's uh, some closed polylines. And what I actually did, if I come into my layers here and I turn this off, turn, you turn off, whatever, turn it off. And um, I want to turn on my reference kind of geometries here. So you can see I actually had some stuff that I just like mirrored around, but I, I knew I mirrored it about the midpoint of these guys. So, you know, those are all watertight. And then this was a, a shape that I had drawn um, here and created. So all I really did was did my border command and I had my, um, I had my roads off so you know this stuff really should be on a different layer here for example put it on a different layer just so it's not visible and all I did was with this layer this layer active my orange layer um, turn it off again I just did my border command and I, I basically was able to then generate that stuff on that layer so then I could come back turn that off leave this on and then I had these guys as closed so again, this is just stuff that I, I drew in CAD. I mean, like, and it's a perfectly flat thing that I just kind of drew um, for my roof roof structure here that, that is there. Um, so we'll get over here, we won't save that. We'll go back to Max, uh, we'll go to Import, and we're gonna do the uh, roof plan. And we'll go ahead and just click OK. Again, I wanna make sure my vertices are welded. And that brings it into place, um, and it's lined up with my roads. You can see in my CAD plan, I actually had the roads in there to kind of for reference and placing it. So as I'm bringing it in from CAD, it's bringing it in on the same um, axes points as um, as from CAD. So if I line something up in CAD and it is aligned there, when I import it into the Max, it is also going to be, um, you know, aligned and in its proper place. Um, and I'm actually going to stop the video here. I, you know. I, I've kind of found that um, this, this video recording software I'm using tends to freak out a little bit. So I'm gonna stop the video here and um, you guys can pick up from your files um, where, for where basically at the end of the roads uh, file here and then the next file will be uh, getting our, our plane and reference geometry in place. Um, so that's where we're gonna pick up next.